What's up guys, Matt here coming at you with another very exciting video. This one is the CR18P Evo and this has the new two-speed transmission in it. Full metal gears in the transmission as well. This is available with, in the T-Hunter, the Rock Van, and the Harvest that I have here. Um, I decided to go with the Harvest because I didn't have one. So why not check it out? It says waterproof electronics. We're going to find out about that. RTR, four-wheel drive, everything you need comes in the box. Battery, charger, a little screwdriver, wheel wrench, and your manual. So here's the 600-mile battery we get with it. The looks of it, you know, the power wagon's been done a lot, so I'm not super excited about that, but um, it's something a little different. It really reminds me of the Panda power wagon. I have that body around here somewhere. We may check that out, but uh, not bad. You know, maybe I'll change that out eventually, but it does seem a little more bouncy. These springs on these shocks are a heavier gauge they just are this is off of one of the rock vans and it feels much softer so that's kind of odd but um these things this chassis performs pretty well pretty wild how they worked the servo in here i at one time put an fcx transmission into my rock van and kind of made a similar amount and had mine almost the same way i uh, just kind of had some issues with keeping it in line with the stock transmitter so i just pulled it back out did away with it but this is very cool that now it's a stock option so you know we got to check this out same transmitter we're kind of used to i like these one-handed deals i mean i've got to the point where i really like these and i've just been using this one even on custom builds because it's so good and it just feels so good in the hand it's easy to one hand drive etc but this does have the dip switches which should control our drag brake and throttle and all of that. So let's hook this up. I'm interested to see how the two speed works. Okay, so just like on the FCX, this is our shift. So um, here is low. Do we have a neutral? Yep, there's a neutral there in the center and then high. Wow, okay. So we're gonna have to take this thing out, crawl with it, get you guys some footage. Let's see how it crawls here on the bench and low real quick. These CR18Ps, they usually crawl pretty dang good out of the box. That's pretty smooth, nice and quiet. I mean, there's a little bit of a ESC whine there, you can hear it, but not like a lot of RTRs we get. Very good. Stock battery, let's put it in high. Oh yeah, <laughs> it's got the kick in high. So, oh man, that's so cool. All right, I'm gonna take this thing out to the creek, hopefully. Um, if it's flooded, we'll just run it out here on the course out back. But um, gonna be running out to the creek, trying to get some footage. Hopefully I can get everything out there. So um, if it's too deep, it's been raining quite a bit here the last day. So um, we may just have to run this on the outdoor course, but very excited to run this, period. So I made the trek out here to the creek. It's raining pretty good, but I was gonna go for it anyways because I've got so much stuff I need to get footage of for you guys. But look at this. I thought there would be like something decent I could get to still, but it's, it's just bad guys. Like, look at that. I can't really get to anything without breaking my neck on this rock. This stuff is crazy slick. So um, I'm going to go back to the house. Maybe we'll lower down the foam course. I haven't ran that in forever. Uh, and I moved some rocks around on the dirt course inside. Maybe I'll hit that. If it slows down raining, I'll get to the outdoor course. But uh, I apologize. Like I know some people want to see <laughs> the, the uh, cedar go in some nasty stuff. And I mean... I'm not going to drive it through that because that's like two feet deep at least. Uh, so I'll just lose it. But I will get it out here and take it through some nasty stuff when it's possible. It's just uh, pretty bad right now and the water's really deep. So um, let's check out some running inside, I guess. So 
So I put a bunch of foam up here. I was gonna work on this thing, kind of redo some of it. I had a bunch of real rock on this thing and it was a little heavy for the lift. So I took all of that off when I built this and was going to finish this in foam. And I just never have, because honestly, I love the real dirt and rock so much more. And now that I have the outdoor course, I drive it all the time when I can, but a day like today, the weather sucks. So we're gonna come back to the indoor stuff. So there's a couple climbs on this foam course that I usually try to do. This is one of them. And this thing probably could have got up it. Having the two speed, it does have the wheel speed to kind of bump this right here. But it's, it's very hard to switch into high when you're standing right there without rolling backwards. And then once you get in high gear to back up a little bit, you back up a lot, <laughs> you can see there. So uh, I just wasn't quite able to get up that. You can see right there, it really had it if I just steered it the right way but um it didn't take me long running this course to realize i wanted to do something different i'm just not a fan of this foam course anymore so uh i tried to move on to the outdoor i did attempt to run it on the dirt and rock indoor course and honestly i just kept rolling it and kind of getting disgusted with it but you know i i kind of found myself comparing this more to the fcx whereas when the t hunter and the rock van came out i didn't really drive those on the indoor course here as much because they have the larger body and just they were like a different platform for me they weren't really something i was trying to compare to the 24s whereas this with this body it's really around the same size as the fcx and so I kept just really comparing it to my FCXs and I don't know, I just didn't feel as excited about this after running it on the course as I thought I would. It just really seemed like it was always hung up like it is right there and just struggled a lot. Uh, I did take it outdoors and it, it did okay there. Um, being a little bit longer wheelbase than the FCX helped it as far as not flipping and it doesn't have the hard body. We all know how tipsy that thing is out of the box. So I think it's slightly better maybe out of the box, but you can see when I was coming up that right there, the suspension just doesn't do anything. Like it doesn't flex right there. See it just, it tips and rolls, you know, it just tilts and twists and rolls. And I rolled it and rolled it. And it's really because those spring rates on the shocks are, too stiff and it just wasn't flexing at all you can see the driver's side right there is coming up really bad and here i start trying to work the steering and get it to go back down like settle a little bit and it really just wouldn't do it um but the steering servos worked great even having pressure on it right there it was turning just fine the electronics are pretty solid in these but they just um are lacking in a few little areas but it's a stock truck. Sometimes going back to a stock truck after running a lot of modded rigs is kind of hard and frustrating for me sometimes. Um, I just get into spots where I'm like, it should make this and I can't. Um, but with a little bit of work, this can be a really good crawler.
So in my opinion, the Rock Van got the best of the Evo release. That thing got some really nice inner fenders and a sweet silver gray, I guess, colorway. Uh, I really wanted that silver <laughs> color Rock Van, but decided to go with the Harvest just because I didn't have one and wanted to check it out and do something different for you guys. Um, the T-Hunter got a really nice orange and a silver, I believe. And um, I really liked the original color of the T-Hunter, so I, I wouldn't even really want to change my color on my T-Hunter. But uh, there are some nice options there. And these things coming in at 139 bucks with all metal gears and the old style transmitter with the dip switches that we loved and then FMS yanked out from under us. Um, that's that's a really good value at 139 bucks and you know i was a little bit hard on this thing when i was running it like I, I got a little aggravated i think some of it was just the weather not cooperating and um that sort of thing lots of things just been going wrong with shooting videos lately but um this thing is pretty dang solid for the price and hobby plus is really good about listening to the things that we want just like overdrive they have said they're already working on overdrive transmission and playing around with overdrive underdrive all of that and already offer quite a few really good upgrades for these whereas like fms you know i was on them about overdrive for the fcx right out of the gate and they're like nah our engineer said it don't need it well your engineer is has no idea what he's talking about apparently um but hobby plus they're on it you know like they really want to improve the truck and that's that's what's leading to them making it better and better and you'll see coming down this with the stock fcx i wouldn't be able to get started right there you guys know how nose heavy or tipsy those things are with the hard body um and this thing was able to at least get started there and i did go back and make this later i just needed to gun it a little more right there but you know it's a tough choice to make between these two between this and say the fcx um I love the looks of the FCX, the things they've done with it. The K5 body is just out of this world on looks. Very little work, and man, you can really make that thing look super scale. And, um, you know, this body to me needs a little work, but it's it's not terrible. Like, it's really grown on me. When I first got it, I was like, uh, you know, but um, watching it crawl here, I think it looks pretty good. And a, a really good set of shocks on this thing. You can see there, it just tips a lot it doesn't flex and it sits a little high so we make a few mods to this it's going to be a very solid contender so you know i don't mean to be sounding too negative on this or kind of hard on it i did get a little aggravated <laughs> rolling it but i've been driving a lot of stuff like the slayer the dementor uh, just completely modded out rigs that um, i have to really try to flip those things almost and so going back to a stock truck sometimes is a little difficult and you can see this thing's driving in the rain it's wet it was nasty there's the suspension just not working again um so i just kind of gave up and went and hit some water puddles <laughs> because uh you know who doesn't love waterproof electronics and i have had zero issues with the rock van in the water and this thing survived what little bit i did in the water here so uh, you know, you can play in any type of weather with this. And uh, overall, it held up well. I didn't break anything, didn't have any issues. And I'm, I'm pretty excited about where this one can go. So trying to crawl around here the last couple of days has been pretty rough. So I kind of just gave up, tested the waterproof electronics in this. Of course it did fine. Everything still works. This does have your lights on the channel four button. So you gotta hit them three times and then they come on and then two, they go off. So um, everything still works just fine. Shift servo and everything's good. Uh, I wanted to kind of show you this next to the rock van because I loved this in the T hunter when they came out, but I kind of looked at these a little different than I am this and maybe I shouldn't because they're the same 
truck basically with different bodies but this having the much larger body i didn't even run this on my indoor course really because it just didn't fit well so i was kind of comparing this a little more to this thing or an scx24 or something and it i just was a little let down with it you'll see the original transmission here how low that motor sits like you almost can't even see the motor from the side it's laying down in here well to that's one thing that really helped this truck is having that motor so low and everything just so low but you can tell here to get the two speed in they had to bump this motor up so they really raised this thing up and they've got the 130 motor in here um which is just a little bigger overall i guess but uh it, it ran good it's just it's just sitting a little higher now um so i don't know overall for me like if this is sitting next to this it's gonna have a hard time selling comparing this with this the two speed layout in this is just a little better for me personally i like it's just in a little more compact area uh, even though the servo is standing up which puts the weight a little higher maybe just um the way it fits in here a little tighter is better for switching bodies and stuff you know a half cab fits on that just fine whereas this you're gonna have to do something a little different because this takes up such a large area so i would have liked to seen the motor lower or at least scoot it over in this in here and it all kind of a little tighter but uh it's it's not terrible it's really maybe you prefer it this way i don't know but for me that's just one thing i kind of like that layout a little better the major kicker for this i feel like if they did all this work for the transmission and stuff they should have got rid of these phillips screws it's just a major no-go i absolutely hate those phillips screws they strip they're terrible um so that's just a killer i don't know why anybody would do that at, at this point but um I don't know it just I was a little let down with the performance I guess comparing it to these it was probably a little bit slightly better than this out of the box just because of the longer wheelbase and the Lexan body versus the hard body but if you put these next to each other I'm gonna buy this every time just because of the looks this looks pretty toyish to me it's the looks are growing on me I think but, you know, when you've got something like this next to it, a licensed body with all the trimmings and stuff that this has, um, with basically the same electronics, I, I just, it's going to be a little bit of a hard sell, I think. So, uh, I feel like this is a, a solid truck, but they could have did a lot more. And, uh, you know, I don't want to be too hard on it because I, I do like it and I think it's a pretty good truck. Uh, but I just, I'm a little let down with it um those shocks look at that i mean they're so stiff but anyways this does have all of the dip switches and stuff and basically just like the fcx you're gonna want the one up because if you put it there then you have a break so break then reverse so you want the first switch up and the third switch up usually for a drag break so uh, mine came that way out of the box that's a good thing instead of being all flipped down or up so it was basically ready to crawl out of the box which is good but um i just think it needs a little bit you guys let me know what you think and uh, i appreciate you watching peace